as one of the most iconic buildings in Southeast Kansas. Russ Hall has a rich history that dates back to the turn of the 20th century. When Kansas State Manual Training Normal School opened on September 8th of 1903, we had five faculty members and 54 students, but it was a different time when students kept enrolling month by month by month. And it was just a couple of years and we had 350 students enrolled there. So all the equipment that they brought in for the industrial arts classes and all the equipment for the cooking and home management kind of classes just filled the building up. So absolutely, we needed more space pretty quickly. We were really one of the fastest growing institutions uh, in the state of Kansas. We really grew rapidly. That rapid growth can be attributed in part to the efforts made by local businessman and then Crawford County Senator Ebenezer Porter. Porter was absolutely instrumental in getting the original legislation for manual training curriculum throughout high schools in Kansas. He was critical for the appropriation of $9,000 to start the school in 1903. He was critical again, uh, you know, for the appropriation to buy the 17 acres, which are the original part of our campus in 1905. And then he's going to be absolutely critical again in 1907 uh, when we finally get the appropriation to build a new building on campus. The 1907 Senate passed appropriation totaled $150,000. Construction began on the new building in August of 1907 and the facility was completed in December of 1908. You know, Russ Hall, when it opened in early 1909, it was one of the premier higher education buildings anywhere in the state of Kansas. I mean, it was a fantastic facility for the time uh, and that really solidified, I think, the, the school here in Pittsburgh. So August 1913, we get our first president, William Aaron Brandenburg, comes in to take over leadership of the campus. And so, I mean, it's like, you know, it's no holds barred. Everything, everything's going our way and we're rolling along. Um, and, but then it's only 10 months later uh, when fire strikes in June uh, of 1914. <music> 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, someone, a, a night watchman on campus, uh, sees um, what appears to be a fire on the upper levels on the south end of Russ Hall. It's not very long before the fire is extensive enough that it just sort of lights up the night sky. In this part of town, the fire alarm goes off, uh, people wake up, they see the fire, uh, dozens and dozens of community people, students, faculty members, others rush to the campus site. The fire horses from station number one and station number two pull the fire wagons down here. They're trying to set up on the east and other side and north ends of the building. Building, uh, to fight this fire. People are beginning to rush in to the building to remove materials, you know, whether it's desks or whether it's books from the library. You can imagine the chaos, uh, people shouting, the wind is blowing, the rain is falling, hundreds of people are milling around, they can't believe what they're seeing. You've got the electricity going in and out of the building, which there's some problem, they can't get it turned off, so wires are falling, there's live wires falling on the ground, sparks are flying everywhere. Pretty soon, uh, as the fire develops and the wind begins to whip the flames even more, uh, suddenly you start to hear some explosions, and what happened is the fire has reached the chemistry labs. And so materials in the chemistry lab are exploding, and everybody knows by that time, it's time to get out of the building. It is absolutely no longer, no longer safe, and the wind is whipping the flame, the fire, through the rest of the building. Rex Tanner, uh, who was a, a graduate and who was back that summer taking summer classes, he tries to quiet the fire horses that have these live wires on the ground sparking around them. Uh, the horses and Rex Tanner get entangled uh, into some of those live wires that are running between Russ Hall and Whiteson Hall. Um, and Rex Tanner is electrocuted. But then in addition to all the chaos of the fire, the destruction of the building, now you have this tremendous tragedy, the loss of Rex Tanner, one of our alums. Firefighters, as well as the crowd of volunteers, continue to put the fire out well into the morning of June 30th, 1914. At 8 a.m., President Brandenburg addresses the crowd. The new president, William Brandenburg, basically stands by the rubble with Russ Hall in the background to the large crowd that's assembled at 8 o'clock in the morning, and he says, you know, we're going to carry on. We're going to begin 
restoration immediately. Within hours, volunteer crews were cleaning up what was left of the building, while members of the community started donating towards the rebuild effort. The big thing was the money to rebuild because the state legislature wasn't meeting, the Russ Hall was not insured, so what's going to happen? What's the future of the college? And they said, well, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna make sure that the future is solid. And in a matter of 20 minutes, $36,500 was pledged by private citizens and others, uh, faculty members, students and others. Uh, 20 minutes, $36,500 was pledged of personal money to start the process immediately. In just a few weeks, a group comprised of both campus and community members had raised over $100,000 to help rebuild the iconic facility. Now in 1913, that's a tremendous amount of money. If you inflation calculate that out today, we're talking about $2.4 million in today's currency was voluntarily pledged by the citizens of Pittsburgh and of the area to start the rebuilding process. With funding in place, construction would begin immediately to reconstruct the building. Brick by brick, the entire region was watching as excitement grew and within 15 months, there was cause for celebration. Within 15 months of the fire, the whole building is open. And so you've got this grand opening, this grand rededication, and obviously one of the premier pieces of that was the marble stairs in the center. You know, you had Walter McRae, uh, who was the great leader of our music department at that time. He wrote a special song just for the event, the SMT in March. They say about 2,000 people came out uh, on that evening just for the grand reopening of Russ Hall. Today, Russ Hall stands as a reminder that anything is possible when people unite for one common purpose. It's interesting that um, the community was behind the original establishment um, of the college and you know that spirit still continues uh, to this very day. I think the Russ Hall fire of 1914 just sort of solidified that connection forever. I mean it was a, just a tremendous um, time of uh, not only pride in the institution, pride in the community, but that collaboration, that cooperation, that spirit that developed and was just really solidified, I think, in that event, and it carries through still today. Uh, I don't think there is a community in Kansas that supports its institution of higher education like Pittsburgh does for Pittsburgh State University.